Now, I don't know about you, but I've never taken a class on decision making. My parents never sat me down and taught me how to think deeply about the consequences of my actions either. When it comes to making life choices, the only teacher I've ever had was life itself. I've made decisions, those decisions have had consequences, and then I've analyzed those consequences with the hopes that I'll be able to make even better decisions in the future. But I'm a human being, and naturally, I want to feel a sense of certainty that the decisions I make will lead to the outcomes I desire. And I'm sure you're no different. How do I know I'm making the right decision? How do I know if I should be persistent and keep moving toward my goal, or just quit and find something else to do? How do I know if I'm using my time in the best way possible? These are questions that all of us have asked ourselves or will ask ourselves at some point in life. And the harsh reality is that in most cases, the only person who can answer these questions for us is the person we see in the mirror every morning. But still, we continue to look to others for guidance, advice, and answers. And in today's episode, I'm going to play a clip of a young lady looking for advice on how to know if she is on the right path in life. And the entrepreneur and content creator Gary Vaynerchuk is going to share a perspective that I believe could help you to find some direction in your life as well. So let's check it out. Hi Gary, you my name is Nika. Um, hi Gary, my name is Nika. Um, Nika. I saw you in Brisbane a couple of years ago and thank you so much for coming back again. Of course. Um, so you're a person who's very self-aware and trusts in the process. Um, what are some key indicators you've noticed in your own experience that have come up when you're on the brink of a breakthrough, basically saying to not give up and to keep going through? All right, let me explain two things really quick before we continue. Her question is, what are some key indicators you've noticed in your own experience that have come up when you're on the brink of a breakthrough? So on the brink of something, typically a breakthrough, but to be on the brink of something means to be at a point immediately before some significant change. You know, we typically use this in relation to the word breakthrough and a breakthrough is like this pivotal moment of discovery most of the time. So like if I say, after years of cancer research, they finally made a breakthrough and blah, 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 blah. What I'm saying is after years of this challenging research that they're doing, they finally hit a point where they now have a drastically different understanding, which allows them to do whatever it is they were trying to do in the first place. Or if you make a breakthrough with your English, it means that this one thing has been challenging you and challenging you and challenging you. But finally, bah, you break through that wall, metaphorically speaking, and now you're on the other side with a much better understanding and you can continue making progress. So again, her question is basically, what are some indicators that I'm on the right path and that I'm close to making a breakthrough or I'm on the brink of making a breakthrough? Another thing you'll hear people say is on the verge of making a breakthrough, same exact thing. And so she's asking, what can I look for to know that I'm on the right path and I'm about to make that breakthrough? I'm trying to find another way to say it, but how can I know I'm on the right path and that I shouldn't give up. I should just persist. That is her question. All right, I'm gonna play it again and we'll continue. My name is Nika. Um, Nika. I saw you in Brisbane a couple of years ago and thank you so much for coming back again. Of course. Um, so you're a person who's very self-aware and trusts in the process. Um, what are some key indicators you've noticed in your own experience that have come up when you're on the brink of a breakthrough, basically saying to not give up and to keep going through? The definition of a breakthrough is you don't know. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Which is why I keep going back to what I want to tell everybody, which is how about you make it about enjoying it versus the need for the breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Right? I appreciate the six people that understood what I was fucking saying. <laughs> which is going to make me say it again that more people didn't go all the way there with me. I'm going to say it again. The concept of a break, breakthrough is a really great question because a lot of people here are grinding and they're asking themselves, hey, I wanted to have this business or this thing. Even in relationships, I wanted this. And now it's been a while and it's not there. Is it ever gonna happen? Should I jump off? Do, should I change? All right, let me explain two terms really quick. He said, the concept of a breakthrough is, really great. is a really great question because a lot of people are grinding and asking themselves, blah, blah, blah. So grinding in this context, it just means working really, really, really hard to achieve a goal. 
I think uh, I actually did an episode called The Daily Grind. And we use that to refer to just the daily, you know, day in and day out every day. You're working hard to do your job, pay the bills, support your family, whatever it is. You're just grinding. If you think about like uh, like two stones in both of your hands and you're kind of rubbing them together very intensely, you're grinding those stones. So if you think about metaphorically speaking, you're just doing lots of hard work to make progress. That might not be the best example or explanation, but uh, hopefully it makes enough sense for you to understand the context of what's being said in this clip. So he's saying a lot of people out here grinding, whether it's in business or a relationship or whatever, and they're thinking, I this is my goal. This is the outcome I desire. This is what I want. And a while has passed. It's been six months, nine months, two years, and I'm still, it's just not where I want it to be. And so then they ask themselves, is it ever going to happen? Should I jump off? Should I change? So in this case, when he says jump off, in this context, he means abandon whatever it is I'm doing. Should I give up? Should I quit? Should I choose a different path? You know what I'm saying? That's really what he's saying. So let me go back a few seconds. It's a really great question because a lot of people here are grinding and they're asking themselves, hey, I wanted to have this business or this thing. Even in relationships, I wanted this. And now it's been a while and it's not there. Is it ever gonna happen? Should I jump off? Do, should I change? This is man and woman's biggest question a lot of times. And the answer is you're not gonna know. You're just not. Sure, you can see gradual, but like you know this, when you're grading your own homework, it's not the truth. All right, really quick. When he says you're grading your own homework, if you try to understand that literally, it probably makes no sense. So to grade an exam or an assignment basically means to give it a grade. It's a noun and a verb, the word grade. So did he get an A, a B, a C, a D, or an F? Is, did he get 100% right, 90% right, 85% right, etc.? That's what it means to grade an assignment. And so when he's saying when you grade your own homework, it's not the truth, what he's really saying is when you evaluate yourself, the only input that you take is the input that you're giving yourself about yourself. That's what it means to grade your own homework. You're assessing your own performance. You're assessing your own value. And the problem with that is your judgment is biased because you are you. So unless you are extremely self-aware and brutally honest with yourself, you can even if you are, sometimes you just can't always trust just your opinion about your progress. That's the basic idea. So let me go back and play it again. Should I change? This is man and woman's biggest question a lot of times. And the answer is you're not gonna know. You're just not. Sure, you can see gradual, but like you know this, when you're grading your own homework, it's not the truth. Like most people think their kid is good looking. <laughs> you know, but in reality, like not everyone is good looking, but we all as parents think our kids are the cutest. We're grading our own homework. We're not letting the merit of the world grade. Same here. I'm thinking of this from a different perspective. I'm asking you, why do you need the breakthrough? Yeah, it, I think it's the, the people pleasing and this not being able to say no to other people and wanting to, um, yeah, to, to prove it to yourself and to other people and you don't want to do that, no. There is no proving to oneself. Yeah. That's disguise to, I want to prove it to someone else. Yeah. Proving to oneself, you never think about proving. You're just living. Mm -hmm. You don't even talk in words of proof. You're trying to prove to someone else. Yeah. Thank you. Mommy, so daddy, ex like those things. Yeah. And that's what we're all doing. I don't want you to prove to any, if you were driven, this is why Star Wars figured it out. I mean it. There's either the good side, like the, you know, the Jedi's and the dark side, they're just so close, it's an inch. They're being fueled by different things, but they both get there. But in the end, the light, love wins. You can't be driven by proving it to the parent or another person that fucked you up. You have to find a way to do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then you're not looking for the breakthrough, you're just living happily. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right, my friends. So what'd you think? What'd you think about the clip? Gary's basically saying, 
the harsh reality of making decisions, the harsh reality of any life path that you choose is it's impossible to know, am I on the verge of a breakthrough? Should I quit? Should I keep going? It's like only you have the answer to that question. And at the end of the day, actually, this is a different way of saying it. It's not that you can even get the answer to that question. Only continuing on the path will let you know. So instead of being results oriented, maybe just be process oriented. Stop waiting for that magic moment where you have the breakthrough and everything works out for you. And instead, just focus on perfecting the process and enjoying the process of whatever you're doing. And if the results come, they come. And if they don't, they don't. And if you get to a point where you just literally don't want to do it anymore or you don't enjoy it, then just stop doing it. But nobody else can really tell you, should you keep going? Should you quit? Because it's just another person's opinion. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't ask for advice or get internal or external feedback. All that stuff is valuable at certain times. But how can you know for sure that each decision you're making is the right one? How could you possibly know? It's not like you can go back in time and see the alternative if you would have made a different decision, right? And also, it's not a smart idea to be doing something only for the end result. Because what if you never get the end result? And you're just miserable the entire time until the day you quit. What was the point then? You know? So instead of trying to impress other people or prove it to yourself, and Gary says there is no proving it to yourself, right? Because you just live your life and do what you want to do. And then that's about it. But any, any feeling that you have to prove something is almost always, or in Gary's words, always for somebody else and not for you. And you shouldn't be living for somebody else. You should be living for you. You know? So it's just something interesting to think about, man, because like I said from the beginning, when it comes to making life decisions and deciding whether or not you should stay on this path or, or choose a different one, is this a waste of time or is it not? It's one of those questions where, you know, any answer is the right answer. Any answer could be the wrong answer. I mean, how are you supposed to know? There's no way to know, man. Especially, you know, like, I guess putting it in more context, moving on to the next part of this episode. When it comes to like learning to speak English fluently, for example, many language learners often feel like they're on the edge of achieving fluency or, you know, they're, they're so close to getting to this breakthrough moment where everything is just so easy for them. And then they kind of realize like, oh, no, there's just more challenges. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like there's no breakthrough point where you're now fluent and everything is fantastic. There's always more to learn. There's always going to be something that challenges you. It's just part of the process. It's just part of the process, which is why I said it's really more about just enjoying the process, learning how to make learning English fun, you know? So finding podcasts you enjoy, finding series that you like watching, books you like reading about topics you find interesting. And then finally, arguably the most important thing is finding people you like talking to so that you can actually put all that shit into practice and improve. But the process is very simple. You just have to go through it thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of times before you get to a point where you feel extremely comfortable talking to anyone, anytime, anywhere. And even if you get to that point, it's not like the journey's over. Because if you go another year without speaking the language, you're going to forget a lot of shit. A lot of shit. So it's more like a lifestyle. It's just a lifestyle. It never stops to the day you die. There's not like some destination you arrive at where it's like, okay, I put in all the effort. I've arrived here and I never have to make an effort again. It just doesn't work like that. So if you're learning English and you're asking yourself, will I ever be fluent? Will I ever get to a point where I have no difficulties understanding anyone and I can say exactly what I want to say in the most natural way like a native can? That's not the right question. I don't think that's the right question. I guess the first question I would ask is why is that the only thing you care about? <laughs> yeah, I, I know the answer to that question. I know why that's the only thing you care about because you learn a language because you want to speak it fluently and be able to communicate with anyone, anytime, anywhere. But I guess the right question is how do I create the learning environment and process that allows me to enjoy it so much that I don't care when I reach this imaginary destination that is fluency? Because I got some news for you, bro. You may never, ever, ever reach your idea of fluency. But what I can tell you as well is you can certainly reach a level where you can talk to the majority of people on a daily basis with no problems or get to a point at least where you're comfortable enough to ask someone, sorry, I didn't understand that. Can you repeat yourself? Or sorry, I don't know that word. Can you tell me what that means? Even just getting to that point is a huge, 
huge deal because a lot of people are so afraid to even ask those two questions, you know? And I think once you have been involved in the process of learning a language long enough, you just reach a point of not even fluency, but confidence to where you, you don't feel bad. Like when you say something that doesn't make sense or you can't understand other people, it's just part of the process. And you know that. And that's why I'm telling you, you practice every single day because then it just becomes normal, you know? Not understanding people becomes normal. It's fine, bro. Just ask questions. Not being able to express yourself is normal. It's fine, bro. Just ask questions, you know? So this imaginary point in your mind where you're just going to reach perfect godlike fluency and be levitating above everybody and you can look down on them, you fucking peasants, you haven't reached my level yet. Like, that's, it's not going to happen, bro. It's not going to happen. You know, this also made me think of, uh, of content creators, you know? Because it's all the same shit, whether you're trying to get big in the gym or lose weight in the gym, get better at playing a sport or an instrument or learn how to speak a language or be a content creator. They're all skills. Skills are developed the same way. Trial and error. Repetition. Practice. Try. Fail. Learn. Repeat. It's, it's the same for every skill. And that's the thing is like once you do it once and you understand the process... You won't even be asking yourself, like, when will I finally reach this level? Or when am I going to get the breakthrough? Because after you've gone through the process and you understand it, there's no pressure. There's no rush. You know, if I do the right things consistently, I'm going to get there. I don't know when. Don't know exactly what's going to be that one thing that takes me. Matter of fact, there is no one thing that's going to take me to the next level. It's a series of tiny little things involved in your daily practice routine that somehow, at some point, get you to the area you'd like to be in, not some specific point, because it just doesn't work like that. So getting back to content creators, I think it's the same thing. It's just like a lot of people will get into uh, the content creation space and their only hope is just to go viral. I want to get 10 million views on TikTok, 2 million views on YouTube, or whatever, however many millions of downloads or some stupid shit. They're just waiting for that imaginary breaking point or the breakthrough to where they just skyrocket to superstardom and everybody knows them and loves them. And it just doesn't work like that, man. It doesn't fucking work like that. Just enjoy the process of making shit. Get actually, get actually good at making shit and then the rest will come with time. But just living for that special moment is what we call destination addiction. That's all it is. You're addicted to this dream of arriving at the finish line when the finish line doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. The finish line is death. I don't mean to get dark here, but the finish line is death. So if you don't enjoy the process up to that point, what the fuck are you doing it for anyway? You know? So it's just something to think about. Another thing to think about is the importance of grinding, the importance of perseverance, right? Getting back to what I was saying earlier, it's all about continuous practice, getting exposed to the language every single day, reading, writing, listening, and speaking every single day. You have to embrace the grind. You just have to embrace it. There's, there's no alternative, not a course that's going to solve all your problems or a podcast episode or one class or one conversation. It's not going to happen. You got to embrace the grind every day, all day, every day, all day, every day. That's it, bro. That's it. If you can just internalize that one piece of information from this entire episode, you will be fine. Embrace the grind. Another thing to consider is the self -eval excuse me, the self-evaluation and also your cognitive bias. You know, Gary talks a lot about grading your own homework and why that's a bad idea. And when it comes to learning to speak English fluently, a lot of times people learning English will overestimate <laughs> their English level. Excuse me. And then they're extremely disappointed when somebody either directly or indirectly shows them that their level isn't what they thought it was. Meaning, you think you're an advanced speaker and then you come across some people, not native or non-native, doesn't matter, and you're in a conversation and you're having a hard time like following what's being said or expressing yourself. And then that just sets you up to feel dumb and disappointed and like you're just not as good as you thought you were because guess what? You're not as good as you thought you were. And I think that, of course, Evaluation is important. You should be able to 
or I guess you should take the time to ask yourself, am I actually making progress? Can I see it? Can I feel it? The problem with that is you won't, you can't always see or feel the progress because again, it's tiny little steps you're taking every day that over time make a big difference. So maybe every six months, you should ask yourself, am I doing better than I was six months ago? And to be able to do that, you need to be tracking what you're doing every day. How many days a week are you actually practicing your English? You need to keep track of that. Because if you're not, it's going to be impossible to tell if you're actually making progress. It's impossible. So six months later, once you've been recording all the stuff that you do every day to make progress, then you can ask yourself, has what I've been doing for the last six months put me in a better position than I was six months ago? But even that, I just think, is not the only reliable source of information you need to know if you're making progress. The real test, especially with language skills, is to use those skills with other people. And it's not something that happens overnight. You're just going to wake up one day and realize, damn, I can talk to natives. I can talk to non-natives. I can use phrasal verbs. I can make myself understood. I know a bit of slang. It doesn't matter what accent they're using. I can understand them. It just doesn't happen overnight. It's just after months or years of consistent progress, you realize it, you know? So if you want real feedback, if you want somebody to really evaluate you, just try to have a conversation about something other than the weather or what you do for a living. Just try to talk about life with multiple people. That's what I would recommend, you know? So evaluation is important, but you got to be careful grading your own homework. You know what I mean? Not only are you biased, but typically you either over or under, underestimate yourself, which sets the wrong expectations. And expectations often lead to disappointment. I think that's, that's what I'm trying to say, you know? Also, people pleasing and, and, and external validation. This is another important one, right? Like the idea that you're learning English just to impress other people or you won't speak until you know in your mind that other people will think your English is perfect, you know, or you only feel good about your English when other people tell you how good your English is. Like this is not the right source of fulfillment, I think. Like what, I mean, just to show off to other people so that they think you're impressive. I don't think that's the right motivation, man. I really don't. You got to like sit with yourself and figure out what is the reason that you are going to do this, even if nobody else ever knows about it. You know, why are you learning English? Is it just for work? Is it just because you're really passionate about self-improvement? You want to improve your communication skills? You want to travel? Whatever it is, it has to be for you, not other people. You got to show yourself that you're capable, that you're improving, that you're learning, you're getting better. Not other people, you know? So don't, I can't tell you what to do, but I, I, I would say it's not, uh, it is not recommended that you put your self-worth in the hands of other people, waiting for them to validate you and what you're doing or how much progress you're making or trying to show off for other people and, and thinking to yourself, I'm only going to be good enough when other people tell me I'm good enough. That's not a good idea, man. It's really not. You know, I think that everybody has different reasons for learning the English language, but it's got to come from within. It's got to be an internal source of motivation. Otherwise, it's going to be toxic, man. And you're almost certainly going to quit. Because what if, what if you are searching for all that external validation and you never get it? Are you going to keep going? No, right? Because the, the, the absence of that validation in your mind is most likely going to be the presence of what's the opposite of validation? I don't know. Let's find out together. Validation. Antonym. Antonym. Uh, no, antonym, motherfucker. What the fuck? What's the opposite of validation? Rejection. Yeah. Disapproval. Opposition. Refusal. Yeah, one of those. <laughs> I don't even remember what the fuck I was saying, but you get the point, you know, don't be looking for at external sources for validation and indication that you should keep going. Like that's, that's really the point. And even the concept of, um, proving yourself to yourself, like you don't need to prove yourself to anyone. You don't need to prove to anyone that your English is good enough or that or, or anything like, I guess if you're learning for work, you need to prove to the interviewer or your potential boss that you can speak well enough. But other than that, 
you don't you don't need to prove anything to anyone that's that's in life not just with language that's just in life i think what's much more important is the internal satisfaction that you get from knowing that you are grinding you are putting in the work to achieve the goals that you set for yourself i think that's where the sense of satisfaction has to come from if you're going to have any hopes of doing it long enough to reach the goal that you set for yourself in the first place Putting your sense of satisfaction in the hands of any external source is just like a bad idea. It's a recipe for disaster, right? It's not going to end well because you have no control over that. All you have control over is what you do every day. Not what other people think or what other people say or how they perceive you and what you're doing. You have no control over any of that shit. So to be worried about that constantly um, only takes you further away from the goals that you have. You just got to focus on you and your shit and what you're doing. And the more time you focus on that, the quicker you'll get to where you actually want to be. The more time you spend worrying about what other people think or these imaginary destinations and these breakthroughs and these indicators and opinions and comments about you and what you're doing. Like, fuck all that shit, dude. The more time you invest into that, the more time you waste. That's what I'm trying to say. It's just a waste of time, bro. It's a waste of time. You have to. And this is something that I've had to do as well. I'm not saying this shit because it sounds good. I'm saying it because I know it to be true. You just have to get to a point where you can put your head down, do the fucking work, and let the results take care of themselves. You do not ask people what they think about it. You do not look for validation. You got to get to a point where you can trust yourself enough to know I've set this goal. I know it needs to be done. Now let me just fucking do it. I don't need to tell anybody about it. I don't need to show it on Instagram. I don't need anybody else's fucking opinions about my life and what I'm doing. I'm going to just do the shit period. And maybe you get to a point where you don't want to do it anymore, but that's also your decision to make. Nobody else's, you know? So I don't know, man. I don't know. The point of this episode really is just uh, firstly to give you something to think about. Secondly, um, I guess just to remind you like, man, nobody knows what the fuck they're doing. We're all making this shit up as we go along and you just got to make decisions, man. You got to make the best possible decision you can with the knowledge you have available to you. And you can't look back because there's no way to go back in the past, make a different decision and, f and find out what the alternative results would have been. It's impossible. So it's a waste of time to, to think about shit like that. Got to make decisions, analyze the consequences and try to make better decisions till the day you die. That's the way I see it. I'm curious to know how y'all see it. So again, if you're listening on Spotify, you can scroll down, like click on the episode, scroll down, and it says, what did you think about this episode? Send me your guys' feedback, because I'm curious to know, what are your thoughts on this topic? If you're on Discord, start a thread there. We can talk about it. Whatever you got to do, hit me up. Let me know what y'all think. Have you had difficulties making decisions in life? What are some of your insecurities that I haven't mentioned in this episode? You know, what motivates you to learn English is also something I'm curious about. And finally, even if you don't hit me up personally, I'll just say, I want to remind y'all again, it's cool to listen to these episodes, improve your comprehension. You're going to learn a lot just by listening to this podcast, but you got to put it into practice. You need to write every day, you need to read every day, listen every day and speak every day. So take this topic, sit down, think about it, and then write your thoughts on paper or on a digital document. Talk with your friends and your family, whatever you got to do but put the language into practice. That's what you got to do. If you really want to make progress and become fluent in English or advanced or proficient or whatever, whatever you want to call it, you have to practice. You cannot just listen passively. You have to actively put that shit into practice. All right, my friend, I'm gonna get out of here now. Thank you so much for your time and your attention. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Real English Radio. I'm your host, Tony Kaizen, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.